um, Proverbs chapter 18. Distraction. They also cause life. 
They can breathe life into us, right? The, some of us um, know in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4, says that the words can be like a tree of life. God, when he spoke, he spoke and all of creation came into to be super powerful. He was super, super good, right? And Matthew um, 5, 9 says that, uh, that there is blessing for those who are peacemakers. So those who, those who speak peace with their mouth, those who bring people together with their mouth, those who bring unity, they, they're blessed. It's a good thing. And tongues can also give hope to, to those who are in despair. They can advance our understanding of the Word of God. Words can, we can see the difference between children that come from a home that there's all this destruction and a child that comes from a home that is spoken blessings over and encouraged and uplifted. And there's a, there's a opportunity in their life. There's a, there's a joy in their life. There's, you know, it's a totally different outlook when life is spoken. Words can give life to us. So the question that we need to ask in, of ourselves this morning is, what will our tongue bring? Are we going to be a people, a person of life that brings life, that upbuilds and, and uses our words for the glory of God? Or are we going to be a people that, that death and destruction follow our, our tongue and what we, what we speak? See, Proverbs 12, verse 18 says, A guard of tongue can be either a thrusting sword, that cut somebody down, or can bring healing. And I want, I want to encourage us this morning, even if I don't think anybody is contemplating this morning whether they really want their, their life to be speaking death, I think everybody this morning will say, yeah, I want my words to bring life, but that I want to encourage us that we should choose life, that our words can reflect the goodness of God so that we can build people up, we can bring life into people situations. See, we were created in the likeness of God, and so the very words that we have have the same power that God, I believe, that the same power that God has when He spoke things into being. We have the ability in our, in our own tongue to speak life, to speak things into being. That's why I said it's so powerful when we're working, when I'm working with students or when I'm interacting with people in Uber and things like that, like I can I can agree with things and in, in destruction and you know they come in the car and they're full of all of this malice about this situation and that situation and I have opportunity there to speak life to speak truth, uplift them, encourage them. So what does it depend on? So if we're going to be a people that we're going to speak life, what does it depend on? Let's turn to Luke chapter 6. chapter 6, verse 43 through 45 says this, No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings up evil things out of the evil things stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is it? How does it? What does it depend on? What, whether we're going to be a person who speaks life or a person who speaks death, it depends on what our heart is full of. Another version says, if, uh, "Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks." Mm -hmm. So, a, a good tree brings good fruit. If you have a bad tree, there's going to be bad fruit. It's, um, I love sometimes Jesus' words are really simple. Sometimes I try to make them more complicated than they are. But we know that if, if we talk about our heart being the tree, our heart being the, the center,
center of who we are, out of that then brings what we speak, what we meditate on, what we, how we live our lives. It goes beyond just the words that come out of our mouth, but how we live is all, all determined about what is in our heart. What, what are we meditating on? What are we filling ourselves with? Mm -hmm. So we, we know this. We've, we've been around people that, um, are, that have a critical heart. Or you're around somebody who has a critical heart, and they have a critical tongue. They're always cutting people down. They're always judging this or that, or there's always something off. And they, it's, it's, it's not just something that comes out of their mouth, but it's something that they fill their heart with. They've always been a, a, it's always been something that is judgmental and, and critical towards things. We know some people that have um, a self-righteous heart. Somebody that thinks really highly of themselves. I think they're, those are perfect. What is their, their typical tongue is usually a judgmental tongue. So nobody is as good as what they can do. I hate being around people like that. They think so, so high of themselves, they, they, they're so judgmental in everything that goes on around them. Or maybe some people that we've experienced have this an ungrateful heart. And they're just never, never thankful for anything. Never, never, anything's never good enough. I, you know what, I just can't get enough. This ungrateful heart usually tends to be somebody that has a grumbling tongue. Always complaining. Mm -hmm. Always something wrong. And I never want to be grateful. Never, I can never really thank God for this. I can never really, you know, I just, man, couldn't this place be a little bit cooler? What if, what if a little bit warmer? What if, I mean, what if my job, what if I had a little less hours? Or what if I got a little bit more pay, or what if I could have had this? They're, all, they're never satisfied. An ungrateful heart, it leads to a grumbling tongue. Somebody's always complaining about things that are going around. But, what about somebody that has a loving heart? A heart that's full of love and compassion. A gracious tongue. They speak grace to people. People make mistakes. They're not quick to judge that situation, not quick to, to cut them down. They make mistakes, they're gracious towards them. They, they understand the that the grace that they've received, their heart is full of love, and they're going to speak grace to these, to these individuals. Somebody that has a, a faithful heart, they're going, to, they're going to speak truth in people's lives. Mm -hmm. not, not truth in such a way that cut them down, but truth in, in such a way that would build them up. A peaceful heart is a heart that, that would speak reconciliation. One that's full of peace and God, understanding that, that there's a unity and a, a bond of love that holds us together. They're going to they're gonna speak into each other um, reconciliation. They're going to be one that, that brings people together instead of causing fights and, and causing arguments and, and malice and discord that, that can come from a hateful heart. They're going to be one that, hey, I'm going to bring things together. Let's, let's come together on this. Let's, let's look at this together. Let's, let's reason together. A reconciling tongue. Or a tongue that, a heart that is full of trust. is going to be one that's going to encourage somebody. To lift somebody up. See, it's almost a, a heart that's full of doubt. Usually you think the worst of the situation, right? But one that is full of trust, you're going to think the best. And you're going to speak the best into the situation. You're going to encourage one another and you can build one another up when there's a heart of trust. So what should we do? So how, where are we today? What if we find ourselves in a place that, hey, my heart is not um, set on these things. My heart is not full of these things. I can see the fruit of my life and sometimes I, I destroy people. I call it destruction. I, I know a friend sometimes who, they would call them like a Heard the term like a bull in a china hutch, right? Or china shop. It's just called it destruction everywhere. So how do we fill our hearts with things that would speak truth and be one that is life giving? And one, one of I think the first step that we can do is to soak or meditate on the word. If we want to get the, the words of life in us, the, that our life would reflect um, something that is, that is life-giving. The Word of God is the most life-giving word, right? It's full of life. It's full of love. So begin first at meditating, soaking in the Word of God. 
So on, here's a, a couple examples here. So on Matthew chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 5, let's turn there, is the Beatitudes. There's a Sermon on the Mount. It's a, a sermon that Jesus gives, and he, he gives all these statements of, of life. He gives these um, statements of blessing, first in, in the Beatitudes. Then he goes in and talks about us being salt and light. And, uh, salt and light, and he talks about... Um, not murdering, what are we thinking about in our heart, not having anger in our heart. And so as we begin to soak on this, we begin to transform our mind, we begin to renew ourselves to the truth and to meditate on things above and not things on the earth, things of life. Um, Romans chapter 12 is an amazing chapter to, to meditate on and to think about, mm -hmm. renewing our minds. I want to have a renewed mind, I have a mind not after the world, which we'll talk about in a moment. I, I, I want a mind that is on Christ, a, a mind that is that is full of, of things pleasing to God, a mind of heaven, as we sing about that song. And heaven's all around us. I want to I want to meditate on the things of heaven so that my mind is transformed into a new way of thinking. And sometimes it takes you know we thought about our heart. Okay, our heart is maybe we'll examine our heart. Our heart's not good. I, I want to renew myself so that I can be. Another cha another chapter. This is really good a good chapter because it, it it's um, full of full of characteristics of love. If you haven't read First Corinthians chapter thirteen, talk all about love. If I want to have a heart that is that is full of love, that's abounding in love, I want to meditate on the character of love, on on, on how it how it will how it operates in just different situations. Let's read that together real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I want to have a heart that is full of love, is abounding in love. I want to meditate on things that produce love in me. I want to meditate on the love of God, the, the kindness that He showed me in His Son. Right? I want to I want to meditate on 1 Corinthians chapter 13 so that love, the traits of love, will begin to be in me and examine my heart. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only resounding God or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have a faith, that can move mountains, but I don't have love, I have nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and I give over my body to the hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. This is this description of love now. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. That's a hard one. Mm -hmm. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love never fails. We can continue reading on. If I want to have speech, that gives life. I'm going to have to meditate on love, that love would be a part of me, that I'd be one that is patient, that I would be one that doesn't keep wrongs, that I'd be one that delight, doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices in truth, that always hopes. And I meditate on that. And I say, Lord, let my heart be full of love. Another passage of scripture that is a, that you can meditate on to soak on receive is in Philippians chapter 2, and it's a chapter all about imitating Christ. If we want our speech to be like Christ, then we want uh, within us to be transformed by Christ. We want to be meditating on the ways of Christ. What was he like? How did he share? How did he care? How did he sacrifice? That as I meditate on that and I receive that and fill my heart with that, then out of my heart it will flow the image of Christ. So, uh, first would be soaking on truth, soaking on the word. And those are just a couple of chapters of example. But secondly, would be careful on what we're taking in. 
we got to be careful if we're taking in debt. You know, I, I, I used to, I, recently I haven't done this, but I used to love the news. I would watch news channels all the time and get all sorts of different information. But we have to be, we have to be careful on what, what we're taking in. Not that the, the news is bad, but there's, there's so many things that we can take in that brings death, that focuses on destruction, that focuses on gossip, that, that, that speaks things, that speaks lies into us. I was saying, like, shows that we're watching, blogs that we're reading, um, newspapers that we read. I don't know if we read newspapers anymore. <laughs> I put that down, though, so some people may still read newspapers. But there's all these different sources that come at us, the people that we're around, who we're, who we're entertaining, and it's the things that, that they're speaking into our lives. And maybe we have to determine what kind of, what kind of guests we're going to entertain, depending on how, what, what they're going to speak into my heart. Because I, is, we're guarding, we want to guard our heart. Because I don't want my heart to be full of things of this world, of destructions, of lies, of, of death. Um, Pray these things. Be careful what be careful what you entertain, but also pray. Um, Psalms 141 3. Mm -hmm. This is a prayer. Psalms 141 3. It says, Set a guard, O Lord, on my mouth, and keep watch over the door of my lips. I want to pray, God, would you, would you give me grace that you would protect what the things that come into my heart, come into my ears, come into my eyes, the things that I see, that I would have a guard so that my heart would be of life. Because the world, yeah, the world, the world is full of the words of death. Because um, the whole world belongs to and lives in the power of the evil one. That's 1 John 5.19. The whole world is in the power of the evil one. And the evil one that we know is, was from the beginning, he was a murderer and he was a father of lies. That's John 8, 44. So, the, so what we're guarding ourselves against is the speech of the enemy. He only knows how to speak lies. That's it. There's, uh, there's, um, there's somebody that Rachel is, is talking with recently and there's, there's things that she's believing in, and things that she's hearing. And they're so contrary to the word of God. They're so contrary to the truth. And I, I said, Rachel, you have, to, you have to ask her the question, what is she hearing? Where is she hearing that from? It's a good practice for you to, to practice as well. Where am I hearing this from? Where is this coming from? Is it coming from myself? Sometimes it's thoughts that I think about myself. Sometimes it's thoughts that I've, that I've opposed on other people, things that I think other people are saying to me. Sometimes it's a really awesome thoughts. It's thoughts that the Word of God and, and God has been speaking to me. But I have to, we have to take captive every thought, right, and submit it to Jesus. We have to think of, it, take a moment and meditate and say, "Hey, who is speaking these things to me?" Because sometimes we attribute things of death to God. Sometimes the lies become so convicting to us that we say what the enemy is speaking to us actually is coming from God. And if we take a moment and we say, where is this thought coming from? The truth of God will prevail in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to determine in our own heart because we have the Spirit of God living in us. The Spirit of God is not going to um, quicken us to death, but He's going to quicken us to life. He's going to speak to us truth. And this is really important. So I, I encourage Rachel, I said, ask this person, ask them, where are those lies coming from? Where, or where are those things coming from? Where are you hearing them from? Because they're not things that, that she's heard from us. But if I believe it's the enemy that's speaking to him. We have to be the same way, guarding ourselves, because the enemy, he's only going to speak lies to us. What are we watching? What are we listening to? What, is, what are we allowing people to speak into our lives? Don't join the enemy in his wrestling. Join them in the evil. Don't join them in the destruction. Instead, remember that we are from God. We are God's. He is truth. He is good. He is honorable. He is loving. He is caring. He is patient. All these things. 
They're from God. The important thing is to remember that we believe the Word of God. Right? We believe Jesus. This is why the centrality of Jesus in our life is so important. Because Jesus is the Word. John 1 says that, right? Jesus is the Word. And He is, and according to John 6, 68, He is the words of eternal life. So if we want to be people who, where our hearts are full of truth, are full of life-giving words, then we must be people that are determined to be full of Jesus, to be centered on Jesus, to meditate on Him, to be full of His words, because His words are the words of eternal life. They bring life. We must join Jesus in speaking life to other people. Because as we fill our heart with His words, then we're going to find that His words flow out of us. It's a natural, um, a natural flow. We're going to fill our life with death, death is going to come out of us. As we fill our lives with Jesus, with His words, His words are going to spring out into us. And we're going to see life. We're going to speak life into each other's lives. We're going to speak life into our children's lives. We're going to speak life into our spouse's lives. All around us is going to be full of His life. Because His words are powerful. So today, what can we do today? I think today, um, we can determine to make our mouths a fountain of life. As a, as a pledge, as a pledge before God, I'm going to determine that my mouth is going to be a fountain of life. I, I pray that, sometimes I pray, God, when I'm interacting with people, I, I pray that they will experience the life that you've given me. When I'm, when I'm talking, you know, maybe I'm at the coffee shop and I get to have a conversation, I pray that, that the, those that I get to talk to will, will experience the life that you've given me. God, I pray that my spouse, I pray that Rachel will experience life when we get to have a conversation with one another. I pray that I, I pray that Cindy, I pray that Cindy will, will experience life when, when we're talking and we're engaging. I, I pray that those that I'm working with will experience life because the life that's within me will flow out of me as I have conversation with them. Determine today that mm, our mouth will be a mouth that speaks life, that there will be a fountain of life. That's a Proverbs 10 and 11. And we can determine in our hearts that, hey, I want to encourage more than critique. That's a, that's not, that was a hard one. When I, when I got out of Bible college, um, I went to college professional, uh, to learn professionally how to preach, basically. That was my degree was in preaching. It was really hard because I listened to sermons. I listened to multiple sermons every day. And every time I listened to a sermon, I had a, like a rubric. And I had, to, I had to make sure that I could pick out the point of the sermon, that, I, that they made their three points, that they didn't say um more than once, you know, and that they, all the different stuttered, I mean, like, to the T, we would, we would mark it all down and everything. It was really hard after I graduated from college, because then every sermon that I ever listened to after that point was this, like, I was doing this whole rubric in my head, okay, and I spent the whole time doing that rather than receiving what was being spoken. Or I would, you know, lean over to Rachel, like, nodding her head, like, I would lean over to Rachel and be like, hey, this, he could have made this point this way, or he could have told this story at this point, or, or I would, and then I would catch myself in the middle of a sermon, instead of receiving what was being spoken, then I was like making up my own sermon, how I could have preached it better, then I was like just doing um, all of it in my mind. It took me a long time to break that habit, to go from being critiquing something to just being able to receive something, just to be able to go from encouraging more than critiquing. But if we're going to be people that speak life into people's lives, sometimes we're going to have to take a moment and to, to meditate on what is good rather than what is negative, right? We're going to have to be able to encourage and speak life into that, that thing that is honorable rather than focus on the thing that was negative. Seek opportunities to speak, uh, to speak um, tender-hearted words Speak encouraging words to people. To say something affectionate uh, to a loved one at an unexpected time. Give examples. To, 
speak um, only to speak words that give are good. Of, sorry, seek to speak words that are only that are good for the building up of others. I want to speak something that's going to build you up. Word, I mean, I've been telling you guys, words are so powerful. I deal with students all the time. You guys may realize that too. You're dealing with people; their lives are destroyed because words that were spoken to them repeatedly, whether it be by an unkno un 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 unknowing parent or to somebody that knows that they're manipulating with individual. Words are destructive. So seek opportunities to speak words that are going to build people up. And you may be the only person to speak life into somebody's life. It's a reality in the world we live in. Give grace to those who hear you. Grace to those who hear you. God is a God of grace and of mercy, right? He, God knows our mistakes. He doesn't overlook our mistakes. Our mistakes are his, but He gives grace to those who make mistakes. How do we? How do we? How do we work with somebody? Or how do we encourage somebody who's going through a mistake uh, or, or makes a mistake? How do we speak life into that situation? We don't. We don't have to. I'm not saying avoid all. All wrongdoings, avoid all mistakes that people make because it's. But in the way that we're in the way that we're interacting with them, within their mistake, how are we doing it? Are we doing it in a way that's going to give life to them, or going to make them feel condemned and guilty and ashamed? There's a, there's a difference, right? In how our words can speak life into the situation. Be a person whose mouth is full of life. Let's turn to Acts chapter twenty, verse thirty-two. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. I want to encourage us to be full of his grace, to be full of his word, that is able to build us up. And as our hearts is full of his word, full of his grace, we will be people who build people speak life into people's, people's hearts, who, who see life spring up, life build up. This morning I, I want to close in prayer, but in closing I want to give us an opportunity to speak life to each other. Um, this Monday at, at our missional community we got in a circle and we run around and we just pray for each other. But we sit and I said, let's pray a blessing over each other. It is a practical way that we can practice speaking life to each other. A blessing um, in the Old Testament was something that was, uh, I'm just trying to think of how to describe the word blessing. Blessing is something that, that built somebody up, that, that blessed them, that, that encouraged them in their situations. We can be like the voice of the Father over each other this morning. Speaking of blessings, speaking of word of encouragement over each other in a form of a prayer this morning. So why don't we, before we close, uh, before I close, it's about you know 10 minutes until 11.30 still. Um, but let's break down into two small groups this morning and practice this. Praying a blessing over each other. And we can just simply go around in a circle, uh, be in a circle, and then the, everybody will pray for the person on their right. Go around the circle and just bless the person next to us. And practice this, hey, speaking the words of life to each other. So I want to pray before we gather the circles this morning. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the reminder that in our tongue, in our speech, we have the power of life and death. 
Father, I pray as we examine our hearts uh, today and even this week, Father, Lord, that we would um, find that our hearts, if we find that our hearts is, is not full of goodness, Father, I pray that we would fill our hearts with goodness. Father, we would fill our hearts and meditate on the things of, of yours, Father, that your scripture is your word, that we may have life within us to speak out to others. Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy that covers a multitude of sins. And Father, Lord, if there's been words that we have spoken in the past that have caused destruction, Father, I pray that you would forgive us, Father. Father, I pray that those uh, words that we have spoken causing destruction, Father, that in those areas that it would be, there would be reconciliation, there would be life, Father, that you would redeem, Father, any situation that is not of you. Father, from this day forward, God, I pray that you would determine that, that we would be determined to be um, speakers of life. Father, that you would renew our hearts, that you would renew our minds. Father, that you would you would watch guard over our eyes, over our ears, over our mouth. Father, that we would be people who guard ourselves, that we would not entertain the thoughts of the world, but Father, we would we would meditate continuously on your words. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in this room today. I, Pray that their lives would be blessed. Father, as we even take a moment to practice speaking life and, and speaking blessing over each other, Father, I pray that it would be encouraging to our hearts. Father, that we would be united together as family. And Father, pray that uh, within us, Lord, life would arise. Lord, in life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.